Oh, hello. You look very nice, young looking, good looking crowd. Well done. Well done. Uh, hello. So, um, my name's Roisin, and my uh, recent good news, keeping with the theme, uh, is that I received an invite to go back to my secondary school to give a speech to the school leavers. Yeah, bit of background information. I'm 31 years old, single, and just recently moved back in with my nan. Winner! <laughs> It's quite nice living with my nan. Uh, she's a very old lady, what with her being a nan. Uh, <laughs> but she's one of those people, she watches all of the soaps, like Coronation Street, EastEnders. She'll sit there for hours, but any reality TV, and she starts threatening to leave the room, like it's so much below what she already watches. <laughs> she's like, big brother on the telly, it's a bloody insult. I wouldn't watch this rubbish if you paid me. I leave the room. I wouldn't watch this rubbish if you paid me. I wouldn't watch this rubbish if you paid me. <laughs> I'm like, nan, you are the nosiest woman I've ever met in my entire life. I bet if I put a net curtain across the television, you'd watch it then. <laughs> when did this slut move in? <laughs> Who's that girl? Um, and it's quite hard having people round when you live with your nan. At 31, it's a bit like, I've got friends coming round now, can you stay in the kitchen? Um, <laughs> but my sister came round the other day with her very new, posh boyfriend, and I was cooking aubergines in the kitchen. Best place to cook them, bath and fucks them up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And my nan walked in and quite loudly announced, I can't stand the smell of those Aborigines. <laughs> Stormed off. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awkward. So basically, the teacher invited me back. I sort of tried to explain to her. I sort of, you know, said, I don't really think I'm in a position to come and advise 18-year-olds. Uh, and she started saying, no, Roshan, it's not about where you are. It's not about where you are. It's about how you made your plans. It's about the climb. Um, it's a little bit like talking to Miley Cyrus, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, and I genuinely had to say to this teacher, the thing is, I have based 80% of my major life decisions on astrology. Uh, <laughs> not even a joke. Not even a joke. <laughs> Honestly, I'm finally owning up to it, because you have to, because I've always been one of those people that people go, you know it's not real, and I go, I oh, know it's not real, I'm not an idiot, I know it's not real, fucking is real. <laughs> <laughs> I have, and I recommend all of you, you love the young people, do this, because if you base 80% of your major life decisions on astrology, you never feel any real sense of personal failure whatsoever. <laughs> so I can fail, Saturn was in return. <laughs> I'm just a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I come from a massive family. I've got 80 first cousins. Yeah, Irish background. What's that smell? Fertility! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one of the older cousins in my family. I've got a lot of cousins in their late teens and early 20s. And I've noticed recently at family parties that I'd, I'm not so much moving away from my youth as the youth kick you out. Because <laughs> um, they don't sort of sit with me anymore and I'm finding myself further and further away from them and spending more time stuck in a table with my drunk auntie B banging out do I know the time I danced with Billy Ocean? Um, <laughs> don't know what accent that was. Uh, sorry, I forgot who she was. Uh, <laughs> but it's like Facebook, Twitter, there's so much. Like, uh, uh, Facebook is... I like Facebook, but what I really miss is uh, phasing people out. That was a really important part of my life. You know, you just used to meet people, you got on for a while, and then you phased them out. That's what happened. And now you've got to meet them forever. Uh, I, I phased someone out ten years ago, cos she was a dick. Um, and then she asked me my friend recently, and I thought, well, I'll see if she's changed. And I accepted her friend request, and after four minutes, she asked me to join a group that was stop cosmetic testing on animals, test on paedophiles instead. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want, don't you? A young-looking, creamy-skinned, youthful paedophile. Running around the place. <laughs> How old are you? 39. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> and everyone's always taking photos. Everyone's got a camera. Give me a chance, you've got a camera here today? Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone, but this is the time you go to a wedding or whatever, and you're like, you know, you got dressed up and you had a photo. And now it's just everyone's taking photos of 11 o'clock in the morning. There's my 100 photos of 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I went to a concert recently, and I was, subtext, I've got a social life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave it doubting me. Uh, and, I, and I went to the front and I was the only person watching this concert with my eyes. Everyone else was just stood there like this. <laughs> with their video phones. And it really annoyed me because I was like, who are you recording this for? Anyone vaguely interested in this band would have come and bought a ticket. They're only six quid! <laughs> uh, and most phones only last two years anyway. So how's about you just watch the concert and try and remember it with your brain, like we did in the old days? <laughs> Honestly, I swear to God, it's really, Someone clapping over there. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I could see a time in like 20 years where people running into rooms going, anyone got a brain from the 80s? I need to remember something. <laughs> anyone? They're like, oh, my phone's dead. I don't know who I am. Oh, no idea. <laughs> so, no, my phone's charging. I can't talk to you yet, mate. It's on charge. I've no idea who I am. 
I might be racist. I don't know. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> but I am, um, I am single. I've been single. Can we cheer if you're single? Yeah. Happy, you're good, yeah. Can we cheer if you're single for three and a half years? <laughs> Not so confident. <laughs> I've been single for three and a half years, uh, and I'm very ha just, uh, um, I'm very happy being single. I'm quite so. I'm contrary to the sort of popular depiction of women. I'm very happy being single. Content is the word I'm looking for. Happy will always make you sound mental. Um, no, no, I don't get out of bed every day like, oh yes, another day alone. Uh, I hope I don't meet anyone I connect with. Um, no, I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> But I'm quite content in my singledom. By speaking to my friend Lucy about this, I was saying, you know, I'm quite all right with it. Went, no, the thing is, Roche, you need to remember the things you miss about being in a relationship. It's about the law of attraction. Focus on the things you miss. So I went home and I started trying to think, what do I miss about being in a relationship? And I realised the only thing I miss about being in a relationship is having someone that I can be horrifically unreasonable with. <laughs> It. that's as far as it goes because if you haven't got someone in your life you know someone that you can sort of show the side of yourself that makes no sense to um, sort of unleash a bit of the mental on um, <laughs> life can quite quickly become a series of polite inane interactions because you go to work every day and you've got to be nice to those pricks they pay your mortgage you're like, morning you're gonna talk to me are you I'm losing white blood cells uh, and then you might move into a flat with some people and they talk about bills and washing up and you're listening to them and fact, yeah yeah but all you want to do is <laughs> meow! Meow! Because let me tell you, the one, of the most, <laughs> one of the things you miss about not being in a relationship is a partner because their job is to soak up all of your miscellaneous noises. <laughs> and everyone's got them, be it the meows or hello or bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> them, you don't have anyone to express them to, especially not in Barclays on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> so that's why a lot of single people are unhappy. It's not, it's not because they're lonely or no sex, it's just because they've got a belly full of unexpressed meows. Meow! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and also I think it's really important if you've got someone that you can be a bit of a dickhead to, you don't have to be reasonable with, but they know fundamentally you're still a good person. That's really important. All I miss about being in a relationship is having someone that I can storm into a room to and go, who needs two bastard lights on in one room? <laughs> and leave. That's it. That is as far as it goes. But, um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going back to my school to give a speech uh, based on my lack of love life, lack of money, lack of everything. Um, <laughs> the only advice I think I can give is how to take sick days. Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, I'm the queen. Because um, if you start a new job and you like to take a sick day, you start with a clean slate. No, some person really leaning in there, like, go on. <laughs> uh, if you start a new job, you start with a clean slate. No one knows anything about you. So when you start a new job, start with all of your grandparents alive and well. <laughs> And technically, <laughs> technically, it's not even a lie. Because if you're like, my nan died five years ago, they don't ask. <laughs> Grief's a funny thing. But I am going to go, and I think the only thing I would say in terms of any real advice I have is I think that it's important that we don't define ourselves too early. Because we all define ourselves really young, like this is who I am. And, and I think you should always try and stay sort of malleable and a work, be a work in progress for as long as you can. Because you don't want to be one of those people, you know those people who are like, this is me, take me as I am. This is me, take me or leave me, this is me. Because they are always, without doubt, dickheads. <laughs> like, this character, my friend, is not finished. Back in the oven, gas mark five. Um, <laughs> Granted, there is the other extreme. You don't want to be there, because I watched a documentary and this woman was 70 years old and she was still having daily therapy. I was a bit like, really? You're on the clock? You know, she, was, but she, was, she wasn't in terrible pain. She was like, my life hasn't worked out exactly as I thought it would. And children don't, you know, they don't fulfill all your expectations. Love, what is love? Who knows? And if I was that therapist, I'd have been like, oh, it seems to me you're suffering from a very bad case of existence. Out. Um, but I think there's a core of us, no matter how much we sort of define ourselves, I'm always worried about the, the, the part of us that we, we sort of rule out as not being us. So you know you sort of go, this is who I am, and then you say, this is not what I am. I'm always worried about the paths that I didn't take. Like, I'm worried that when I die, and I meet God or whoever's running this gaff, uh, and I'll be like, why was I quite anxious quite a lot of the time? I felt a bit, you know, that feeling you've got in your stomach, a bit empty. And he'll look at me and go, because you never tried darts. <laughs> Why did you all 
darts out so early. <laughs> darts was where it was for you, princess. Uh, <laughs> or something along those lines. But I think there is a core part of ourselves that is always the same, and it's who you are as a child. And as you get older, we sort of normalise ourselves, make ourselves light and stuff, but we all got a core. Uh, and the core of me is creepy. Um, I was a very, very creepy child. Uh, there's no easy way of getting into that. I was one of those children that when people saw them, they went, oh, God. <laughs> and contrary to popular opinion, I wasn't sort of those, you know, kind of quiet and killy children. I was very loud and mental. I'd sort of run in and go, all right, yeah, my dad drives a helicopter, prove it down. <laughs> creepy child but as I've got older you know I've become very socially adept I'm very normal now like I'm really socially adept if I met you sir I'd be like hello how are you would you like a cup of tea bang done um, <laughs> the only time the true core of myself comes out is when I meet someone that I'm attracted to then old creepy McPherson comes back <laughs> uh, it's really bad uh, and when I say creepy I don't mean a sort of bumbling but ultimately endearing kind of Meg Ryan way I mean fucking creepy <laughs> My friend Caroline said, it makes the hairs on my arm stand up to watch. <laughs> I was at a party recently in North London, and I was a massive house, and I was talking to this guy, and after about five minutes, I thought, oh, what's this feeling I'm experiencing? Attraction? Uh, that's fine. After about ten minutes, I knew Creepy was waking up, because um, I found myself talking quite a lot about cheese. <laughs> anything about cheese so I was like cheese and I thought maybe it's not a, it's not no he's not he's not back he's not back 15 minutes into it creepy was running things I was talking to this guy doing this <laughs> like some horny gazelle about to leap at him still banging on about cheese like, and there's other cheeses there's other cheeses uh, and I thought to myself what should I do how should I make this what can I normally I'd be like I've just got myself into a funny position ha 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 because creepy I'm gonna give you nothing um, there was music coming from another part of the house. Very, very vague music. Creepy went, pretend you're dancing. So I started clicking along to this music. Just clicking. Jeez, I've had fetish. It gives me wind. Um, do, you know what, do you know what music was playing? Reggae. No one in the history of the world has ever clicked to reggae. Yeah, yeah, I've had this. Do you get cheese on pizza? I've had cheese on pizza. That's quite nice. Um, yeah, uh, 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 there's, what other cheeses have I had? What other cheeses have I had? And the horror of what's happening like I'm very socially adept, the horror of what's happening is killing me and I just start sweating profusely, <laughs> literally dripping. I look like Mickey Rourke from The Wrestler. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one trickle of sweat slowly starts coming down my face. Could have wiped it away like a human being, but Creepy was running things, so I went... <laughs> my own mouth like some horrible lizard woman. <laughs> and that's one of the many reasons I will die alone. Uh, I'm going back to my school uh, and I've got nothing to say to them. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely lovely. I've been Roshan Connie. Good night.